at the center of many of the controversies, both surrounding those uh, the investigation within the AFP, eh, are two Aita gentlemen, Japer Gurung and Junior Ramos. Uh, right now, the, at, as of the last time that they were seen at the press conference, and uh, there were interviews also made with the PCOO uh, sending videos out of this interview, what is clear here is that both these gentlemen are very, very confused. And are, they are confused because there are so many people who are talking to them. And as a matter of fact, one of their complaints in the video is that they have had people coming in, talking to them, talking to them, saying investigation, uh, repeatedly saying they are going to be represented, saying they're going to help them, there's going to be an investigation, and all of this. To the point that they are very, very frustrated, primarily because they seem to be the linchpin and some brewing controversy. In the controversy, well, not, it's not brewing, it's already full-blown, uh, regarding the NTF LCAC on the one hand, the communist insurgency on the other. These two gentlemen, just to recall, uh, are imprisoned. They're both detained. Okay? And they're undergoing trial for violation of the anti-terrorism law. They were in the limelight in uh, 2020 October of 2020 because there was a claim that they were tortured and that they were forced to eat human waste this had gone this had caught the imagination well what happened here there was an evacuation due to the ongoing skirmishes or ongoing firefights with the AFP in the area where their the Aita community is settled and they were evacuated Shortly after the evacuation, they had gone along with the, uh, with the other members of their community and somehow they were later arrested for violation of the anti-terrorism law supposedly because they are members of the CPP NPA or the NPA. And they, they were detained and then they have now gone to trial. The allegation is that they were tortured into admitting become, being members of the NPA. Now, this would be just be another of those cases involving uh, uh, suspected insurgents and suspected members of the NPA. But they were again catapulted into the limelight uh, just as the oral arguments on the anti-terrorism law were about to begin. And uh, the Supreme Court ultimately denied their petition uh, without uh, giving out yet to the media or to the public the reason for the dismissal of the petition but before that had become known through the announcement of the chief justice himself the the solicitor general had uh, been making a motion moving to bar the new petition on the ground that it had no basis in fact because the two aita petitioners we're now dis disallowing or disavowing the affidavit that was attached to the petition claiming that they had been tortured and that they are they should be admitted as petitioners in the case before the Supreme Court. But what is ultimately well the same case is also being had also just been recently investigated by the AFP to see again if their claim is true as to whether or not they had in fact been tortured. They had already been investigated by the 7th Infantry Division to determine if their claims are true or if the claims allegedly attributed to them are true. Yet, in the end, what is very clear is that these two Aita gentlemen are like pawns in a massive chess game. We have the determination of whether or not they have been tortured or the fact of their torture or alleged uh, humiliation had actually happened being a linchpin in the investigation of General Parlade being a possible test case later on before the Supreme Court to determine how the operationalization of the anti-terrorism law and whether or not this should be declared unconstitutional if not now or it could be at a later date using their case. So suddenly these two gentlemen have become very important over matters that they barely understand. And I think this is the big tragedy here. It isn't any more about the insurgency. 
it isn't anymore about the anti-terrorism law that's before the Supreme Court. It is the fact that these two gentlemen who are so confused about what is going on as to whether or not even they are NPAs, we are not sure because they are still undergoing trial. But what is sure is that they are being used. And I, it saddens me to think that, you know, that the Supreme Court, which has determined that the, the cultural communities, such as the Aitas, are a specially protected class. We are supposed to take care of them. We're supposed to give value to who they are. And yet here, here they are in the middle of so much controversy, in the middle of uh, so much arguing and noise. And yet they, they, they're the ones who can barely understand what is going on. And they're so frustrated right now. They just want everything to go away. And don't we feel like that sometimes? They just, things are just too noisy. You want everything to just go away. But they can't do that. They're on trial. And they're on trial for their lives. And I hope that, I, I'm still hoping that they, that this is a case of mistaken identity, that they, they are not really uh, NPAs. But if they are, I hope that some consideration be given to the fact of their illiteracy, of their being members of the cultural community, and something can be done for them. Because right now, things just keep getting worse and worse for them. Not that it's a bad thing, you know, the, 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 the case before the Supreme Court is, is very real and very important. The case, uh, uh, the investigation of General Parlade is also hugely important for the fight against the insurgency. The, whether or not they were tortured is also very important. All of these are, are hugely important issues. But I think that what we are all forgetting is that these two gentlemen, well, they're important too. I hope that things quiet down for them. In the meantime, the cases continue and the cases go on. But at the middle of these are two human beings. Let's not forget that, please. This is Luminous.